This is the way! So who talks first? You talk first. I talk first. Okay, I'm gonna put this down. Mando, season three, episode two, The Minds of Mandalore, but they really should have called it Bo-Katan is a sexy badass bitch. God, she was so great in this. I'm Han, this is Han Talks First, Star Wars podcast. We're here every week talking about Mando and a bunch of other things too, and check out the YouTube channel. Subscribe for me, like the video, it helps out so much, and let's get into it. Okay, so we started off last week by talking about the director, and let's do the same here. So this was a brand new director to Star Wars, Rachel Morrison. For those of you that don't know, she was the cinematographer for films like Black Panther. How cool is that? And she's directed TV before in the past, and she's finally into the Star Wars world, and I thought she did a really, really great job. And you could tell she has a cinematographer background because the way the shots were composed here were really great, especially the opening of the cave and all the shots of Mandalore, the exposition shots. I don't know. It was just a really great story this time around. So, Rachel... These lady directors in Mandalorian are killing it. Obviously, this is a spoiler conversation, so if you haven't watched it, GTFO. Okay, look, so the episode starts off with a bit of an unnecessary travel period going back to Tantooine, and it reminds me of what happened last week when Mando went to go visit Bo-Katan and ask her if he wanted to help her, and she said no. And I was like, man, that really could have just been a phone call, like a little hologram, you know? Just grab his little, you know... Grab his little holocron, just give her a call. That's not how these work. But you know what I'm saying? Like, it could have been a simple phone conversation to have rather than fly all the way out there, waste gas money. I mean, you're not a bounty hunter anymore. How are you making credits, bro? How can you afford to go out there? You got a baby to feed. Is he not taking care of you? Okay, but anyway, I felt the exact same way here when he comes to Tatooine and he flies all the way across the galaxy into the Outer Rim to go see uh, what's-her-face Amy Sedaris, who, by the way, gave an Emmy nominating performance in this episode. I'm kidding. Hell no. Look, she's fine. I just, I don't like it, I guess. It was okay. But anyway, he flies all the way there to ask her if she's got a part for a droid. And it's like, bro, I'm pretty sure she's got a phone in the back room. Could have just called her up. But no, they had to fly all the way there so they could have a cute Grogu moment of him jumping out of the pod into her arms, just like his great-great-grandpa Yoda. I'm not gonna lie, it was kind of cute. But anyway, it just felt a little unnecessary. You know, it's like, come on, I don't need to, we don't need to go back there. It's, it's just, it's kind of wasting my time a little bit. When they dip out, they finally go to Mandalore. He's got this new droid to help him navigate the ter terrain and make sure it's breathable air. And, you know, they can walk around and whatever, and it turns out later that droid really is just kind of useless piece of garbage. I mean, it, he tells him it's okay to breathe, but it's like, bro, you got a mask on anyway. But once they get to Mandalore, it was so cool to see Mandalore realized live action for the first time. I mean, it was so cool, even though it was desolate and decaying and, you know, riddled in aftermath from the war before, but it was still really cool to see. And then, of course, he go, he's, he's going there, obviously, to explore the mines and bathe in the living water so that he can redeem himself or his faction of the watch, and yada, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So when he gets into the cave for the first time and he meets these troglodytes, I forget what they're called. I think they're called something fancy, like Alamites, Alamites. I think that was, they were gave, given that name on purpose to sound like troglodytes, because when it first popped up, that's all I could think of. I was like, oh, cave people. But anyway, we get to see Din use the Darksaber again. We saw it a little bit in Boba, and uh, we get to see it now in Mando, and it was pretty cool. I mean, he, he, knows, how, he knows how to use it. He doesn't, he doesn't really know how to use it, but... He, enough to get the job done, you know, he's not a, he's not a sous chef, but he just got hired at the restaurant. Does that make <laughs> any freaking sense at all? And what was really great was we got to compare this to when Bo comes in later and she just wrecks shop with it and she like knows exactly how to use it. Bo is a sous chef. And then he comes across Spider Monkey General Grievous. I thought the creature was really cool. I loved that it didn't talk. It made it even creepier. And I loved how it was crawling around. It was, it was kind of like a horror film. He was, you know, tied him up and he was draining his, his essence. A little dark crystal joke for you, if anybody got it. Uh, but the creature was cool, you know. And I, I like that it shows that hey, Mando is in, not infallible. You know, he he has, he's not that talented. And especially when it comes to places like Mandalore that he's never been to. You know, he doesn't know what he's up against. And it really makes me question, like, are you, are you really fit to raise a little baby in the galaxy? I mean, if you're going to go on all these dangerous quests, you should be able to, you know, take care of yourself first. But anyway, then he tells Grogu to go find Bo-Katan. 
and I love how he's just zipping out of there like a little Hot Wheel toy going down the ramp. And you know, it wasn't too unbelievable that he would be able to jump in the ship and fly away, because one, the droid was there so it can navigate for him, and then two, we saw in the first episode, Din is training him in the ways of the Mandalorian, not only that, but how to pilot, how to navigate the system. He's like, if you're going to be a Mando, you got to learn your way around the galaxy. You got to know the planets and know how to get around. So anyway, he goes to Bo. Bo decides, okay, you know what? I'm going to go help this stupid guy wasting my time. And then she gets there, she gets the Darksaber, and she just wrecks fools. And it was so freaking cool, and I love her shield. And... And it really shows, hey, this she this is an elite warrior. You know, she, obvious she's been trained in ways that Din can only imagine. And she's totally fit to be a leader as far as someone who will charge the battlefield and lead everyone in there, you know. I do have one gripe about this episode. You know, when Bo came to Mandalore and she's walking around, she was doing the same exact motions and paces and blocking that Din was doing once he got there too. And it was like, okay, come on. We've already did this. Oh, oh yeah, Din already said that too. Oh yeah, he told Grogu this was a beautiful place once. It was just like repetition, repetition, repetition. All the same pacing too, as if the audiences were experiencing it for the first time yet again, but we weren't. And I don't think it added anything to the conversation or added anything different than Mando's first experience there. And then, of course, she rescues him. They get together, and she's like, okay, I'll show you the Minds of Mandalore to prove to you that you don't need it. And then they go there and they find the waters. He takes off all his gears, jetpack, etc., hops into the water, and what happens? He drowns. All, all the armor just <laughs> weighed him down all the way to the bottom of the floor. And it's like, dude, come on. Like, if she wasn't there, you would have been dead twice. You would have died twice. And again, she hops in, saves him, and it just shows, hey, like, she's, you know, she, she, it's someone who you could trust. It's someone who will have your back in battle. I mean, she doesn't have to save you. She doesn't even like you right now. But she went in there and got him. And then we see Mythosaur. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I kind of wish we got to see this guy. This stupid holiday special Stegosaurus snake sloth anteater looking mofo. Yeah, we'll probably, we'll probably never get that. Um, but it was it was so cool. I honestly didn't think we were going to see a mythosaur like ever in this show because they were thought to be extinct. But then again, so were the Jedi and haha, <laughs> Luke Skywalker. And I saw some people saying that the mythosaur dragged him down there. I don't think that's the case. I literally think it's just because his armor, you know, he took everything off and he just sank to the bottom. So he couldn't fly back up if he wanted to. But that's just me. Um, but this episode did what the first one didn't as far as setting up you know, what the future of this episode's going to be. You know, it showed more that Din Djarin is starting to question his own religious zealot beliefs. You know, there was a very key line in this episode where Din says to, to Grogu, Bo-Katan was right. And he was talking about the being able to breathe on the planet and that it wasn't completely cursed and things like that. And then Bo had a really great line following that where she was like, are you sure about that? Look around. You know, this is a terrible place. Maybe we're cursed as people. But anyway, I thought it really led to a conversation that Din is starting to question his upbringing and those views, the ideology he was pushed on him as a child, and starting to realize, well, hey, maybe that's not the way. Maybe the way is whatever, you know, we all come together. And I think that's what's set up in this episode, what's going forward. You know, they're going to have, obviously, the two factions come together and try... Obviously, there's going to be some kind of battle, a civil war. Bo-Katan said it herself, like, why the hell do we have to fight each other all the time? And then Din is going to play this traitor trope. And it's a very common trope in these types of hero's journey, television shows, storytelling. It's very common in things like Pocahontas. And then it was obviously in uh, Avatar, you could say. But it's where he tries to bring together two different sides who hate each other for very dumb reasons and ultimately unites them but i think there's going to be a lot of pushback there's going to be some battling wars something with the dark saber going to play into effect and then i think a third party is going to be the empire they were mining the mines in mandalore long before you know 
anyone else was trying to fight over it and reclaim it. But that was the episode today. I mean, it was a great episode, much better than last week's. Not to say the last week's was bad, it was just, this one was just really good. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm Han, and I'll be back next week to have more discussions on Star Wars, talk about episode three. Check out my other videos too. I just did one about the Kevin Feige movie that is apparently shelved. Might wanna check it out. And Lucasfilm is having some weird drama right now, especially with a lawsuit going on over the producer of the Acolyte TV show. Apparently she was fired wrongfully, and she actually has a case against Lucasfilm and is suing them, and it doesn't look good. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you have a great week. And now, my friends, somehow, someway, somewhere, this week, may the Force be with you.